So here is a molecule I've drawn over on the left, and we've simulated the spectrum. We simulated it at 400 megahertz, and we got the spectrum um, in the bottom of the screen. So I want to focus in on a particular part of this spectrum, and just these signals right here. So if we look at these different, um, these different peaks, we have uh, this signal. This signal is by the hydrogen that's in yellow toward the top of the screen. That hydrogen has one neighbor. We'd expect it to be a triplet. That's indeed what we see. And that triplet, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we expect to see a doublet because it has one neighbor. One neighbor multiplicity should be m plus one. Uh, one plus one gives us two. That's a doublet with a relative intensity of one to one. Perfect. The next peak over. This is a hydrogen. This hydrogen has one neighbor. That one neighbor should make this peak into a doublet, and it does. And it has a, uh, the peaks in the doublet have a relative intensity of one to one, just as Pascal's triangle says. Now, this peak is a little bit more problematic. This comes from a single hydrogen. That hydrogen has two neighbors. Based on that, n equals two, and you expect it to have a multiplicity of three. And furthermore, those three peaks should have a relative intensity of one to two to one based on Pascal's triangle. We don't see that. Instead, we see a peak that has is uh, has a multiplicity of four, four separate peaks. And you say, okay, fine, it's a quartet apparently. But it's not a quartet that we've ever seen. Our quartets normally, based on Pascal's triangle, have a relative intensity of one to three to three to one. And this is a quartet one to one to one to one. Something is up. So what I've done on the next slide is I've zoomed in on this peak and let's take a take a look at this. If we were to look at this peak more closely, what we'd see is that these peaks here are separated by about 7 hertz. These also have a separation of about 7 hertz. Furthermore, if we keep on looking at it, we'd find that these two peaks have a separation of about 15 hertz. And as it turns out, this is what you call a doublet of doublets. Now, how do you get a doublet of doublets out of this? Well, so we have our signal from our hydrogen. And so this is, this is our original hydrogen. And this signal gets separated initially through one coupling interaction. One of the hydrogen neighbors has a coupling constant of about 15 hertz. And so that single coupling from that one hydrogen makes us into a doublet. And then each of those doublets is split yet again by the other neighbor by a different amount. And that amount is about 7 hertz. And that gives rise to this doublet of doublets. In fact, we call it a DD. Now, what we're used to seeing when something has two neighbors is that you have the signal, and the first hydrogen splits the signal into a doublet. And then the second hydrogen splits it again. And it just so happens that the peaks in the middle overlap into the same place. And so we get this 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. And that's how we get the Pascal's triangle. And then if we got a, if we got a triplet, I'm sorry, a, a, a quartet, we get 1 to 3 to 3 to 1 because we just add up the groups that contribute in the middle. If the hydrogens don't have the same coupling constants, we don't get this overlapping effect, and we see just more and more lines. And so this happens to be a doublet of doublets. Let's go back to our spectrum. And not to belabor the point, let's just make this a little bit more complicated. Let's go into our molecule and delete one of the chlorines. So now that we, we have two hydrogens on that particular carbon, that changes our number of neighbors. Let's simulate the spectrum. And now what do we see? Okay, well, we got rid of uh, one of our signals, but what we see is that these hydrogens actually show up now. This hydrogen has now one neighbor on one side and two on the other. So these two hydrogens make this 
that hydrogen into a triplet, and then that triplet is broken up into two triplets, and we get a doublet of triplets. So as you can see, if you don't have really simple multiplicities, these peak patterns can get really complex really quickly. But it's important to understand that because even though we've seen a lot of simple molecules, the fact is when you do organic chemistry, you, it's very easy to find molecules that violate the simple multiplicities. We tend to, we're going to encounter things like doublets of doublets and doublets of triplets. And they're frequently encountered. We need to be aware that, that they occur in a lot of organic molecules.